a reading from the Book of Lamentations. To what shall I compare you, or to what shall I liken you, O daughter Zion? To what shall I equal you, that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For great as the sea is your destruction. I think this passage from Jeremiah, which I just read, powerfully captures the intensity of Mary's suffering at the death of her son, a suffering so great that it's actually difficult to compare it to any other suffering any one of us could endure. St. Alphonsus, in speaking about the sorrows of Mary, describes Mary as the queen of martyrs because her martyrdom was longer and greater than all of the other martyrs. St. Bernard of Clairvaux tells us, Mary was a martyr, not by the sword of the executioner, but by the bitter sorrow she bore in her heart. He also says, the passion of Jesus began with his birth, and therefore Mary, like Jesus her son, endured her martyrdom throughout her life. The sorrowful heart of Mary painfully mirrors the passion of her son, reflecting the blows, the wounds, and all that Jesus suffered. Although the life of Mary, like the life of Jesus, was laced with sorrows, the church singles out seven sorrows, or dolors, from the rest, so that we, her children, can reflect and commemorate them. At the time of the presentation, Simeon, the old prophet, takes the child Jesus in his arms and he prophesies to Mary what's to come. And your own soul a sword shall pierce, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. In the second dolor, we see that this sword of Simeon didn't wait very long to pierce the soul of Mary. Shortly after Jesus' birth, she flees to Egypt by night in order to protect the child from the hatred of King Herod. Another special dolor of the Blessed Virgin was when she and Joseph returned to Jerusalem. Tormented and racked by anxiety, Mary and Joseph searched for three long days until they found the boy Christ. The fourth dolor, dolor recalls that dread hour when Mary gazed on the bruised and bleeding face of her son amidst the awful clamor on the road to Calvary. In the fifth dolor, Mary stands brokenhearted beneath the cross of Jesus. In the sixth, our mother of sorrows receives the still inanimate tortured body of her son into her arms. And finally, in the seventh dolor, we meditate on our Blessed Lady when she said farewell to Jesus at the tomb. Sorrow comes to all of us in our pilgrimage of life as a consequence of the misfortunes that happen to us, either from within or without. Bereavement, loss of fortune, calumny, Malpractices designed against us are all causes of exterior affliction that come to us. Sickness, humiliation, temptation, and remorse for past sins give rise in us to interior sufferings. Unfortunately, there are many incorrect ideas about suffering. There are those who falsely think that the Christian way of life glorifies suffering for its own sake. Actually, the Christian ideal is to use suffering as a means of virtue, to turn something evil into good. Because suffering is not good in itself, it is indifferent. 
The good or evil in suffering lies in a person's attitude towards it. It may be either embraced as a blessing or a curse. It can strengthen a person's nature or cripple it. Take, for example, the two criminals which, who were crucified with our Lord. They both suffered the same torments. While one accepted his state as a just punishment and obtained a promise of future happiness, the other made his state worse than before by railing and cursing. So the important question is, how do we embrace our suffering? Our human nature can be purified and refined by sorrow born in patience for the love of God. And I assure you, if we go to Mary, our mother, in our hour of suffering, not only shall we receive from her consolation in our affliction, but we shall also learn by her example. There is something particularly personal about the cross of each one of us. For some, it is a mental anguish, dread of death, unreasonable fear of sins long since forgiven. For some, it might be a persistent and harassing temptation, hidden perhaps from every eye, never spoken of except in the confessional. Or it may be physical pain, incessant headaches, sleepless nights. Despite the differences our personal lives may have, each one has the potential of having a sacramental effect on us it can become a fountain of much grace to the soul if we bear it in patience and for the love of God. It will make us more gentle, tolerant, sympathetic, resigned, and charitable. Jesus and Mary show us that the royal road of the cross, the road of daily suffering, is the only road to the crown of eternal glory that God has prepared for us.